Okay. Um, well, we'll go ahead and call the January 4th, 2024 Historic Preservation Commission meeting to order. Can we have the roll, please? Chairman Lane. Here. Commissioner Sibley. Here. Commissioner Fenster. Here. Commissioner Norton. Here. Commissioner Barnard. Here. Council Representative Pack. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We have a quorum. Um, first order of business is the approval of the December 7th minutes. Uh, do any commissioners have any comments or corrections on the minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion to approve the minutes from Commissioner Fenster. Second. And a second by Commissioner Sibley. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None? Okay. The minutes are approved. Uh, let's see. Report from the chair. Um, I guess welcome uh, our new council representative, Mayor Peck. Um, the only other thing I have to make a comment about would be um, since our last meeting, we did have the uh, zero uh, ordinance, uh, zero reading of, of the demolition and revision uh, ordinance. Um, I attended that council uh, session al along with uh, Commissioner Barnard. Um, <clears throat> uh, Glenn gave a presentation that I think was well received by council. And uh, I think the second reading, we can get into this in staff report, but the second reading will be coming up here, I think this month, right? Yeah, perfect. I'm sorry, yes, first reading, right. Yeah, thank you. That was the zero reading. Right. Okay, uh, communications from our HPC st staff liaison, which in this particular you. case will be Planning Director Glenn. Sorry, Sorry I'm not Jennifer. <laughs> but I try to be. <laughs> So I'll do my best. Um, just a couple of updates. Uh, you're familiar with the appeal. Uh, the applicant wasn't able to make it. I forget what date that was originally scheduled for. So it's now been rescheduled to February 13th. And as Chairman Lane said, the um, HPC amendments are on first reading um, this Tuesday. So the 9th and second reading, if that goes well, will be on the 23rd. So. Yes, we'll get through in January, hopefully, with those amendments. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, do any of the commissioners have questions for staff? Yep, Commissioner Barnard. Uh, on? Yep. Okay. Um, Glenn, I know that we communicated before the New Year, and I'm just curious now. I, whether or not any progress has been made in the discussion with the Parks Department about the uh, Kanemoto Tower of Compassion. And the reason I ask is uh, just not other, other than the fact that I was interested in this before, is that uh, the Lawman Symphony has decided as part of their gala event this year in May, they're going to honor the Kanemoto fam family. Uh, and the Kanemotos have accepted. In fact, they're buying three tables for the gala on May 18th, which also is historic preservation, preservation. month. Right. Um, and I know the timing is tough to get all this done with everybody, but I just was wondering what, what can be done to start, whether it's something you need to do, whether it's something the city council needs to first ask you to do, or just how we're going to move forward on this, because time is kind of not of the essence, but it would be nice if it could be done. Yeah, yeah. Well, I realize things slip up, up, catch up with you really quick. So, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I'll I'll double check with Jennifer. I don't know if we've. I, I mean, just following the pattern like we did with the silo, we went to Parks and Rec and just gave them kind of an update that was generated from a citizen. So we'll just do the same thing. But then it, we go to council and we basically ask. Can we proceed as representative of the landowner, the council is? So they give us the okay, then then we're kind of off and running. And then we come back to you with an ordinance. You make a recommendation, goes back to city council. 
So potentially it could be done by May. I guess I'm trying to figure out what would chicken and egg, are we in a chicken and an egg situation? Um, or, uh, you know, is this something uh, that you have to go to parks first before you go to council? Or does council say, go ahead and talk to parks and see what they think? I mean, it's. Yeah. I, I don't think we need an okay. It's just kind of a. Let them know what's happening. I don't know that we have to get them to agree to it. So I don't. I don't think that's going to hold us I mean, up. If just, that's your concern. Well, I was just thinking of what happened with the with the um, historic East Side Neighborhood Association. That uh, mayor, you're here, but you can speak for yourself. But the mayor specifically did took the asked that the council take the action, which then started off the process. So I'm just wondering if that's what we need to ask the council to do. Since we've already voted to support it, you know, that we've done our share. So, yeah. Um, right. Yeah, we right. just have to get council to say, yes, go forward with it. Yeah. yeah, we actually, I think you made that motion last meeting, right? Right. So it's, a, it's been moved and voted on from us that, 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 we, that we direct or ask staff to, to keep this moving, to take it to council and ask for direction in terms of um, can we move forward with a with a uh, uh, landmark ordinance? Uh, can I ask for a clarification? Um, hold, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Uh, just a clarification for your request for May. Are we asking for a local landmark or the state and national register listing that we've asked to go to the state? Um, because I could provide some details. I don't know if the state register would be done by May. But because the, the next meeting is actually January 19th, and we don't have that on the agenda, I think, for SHPO. Right, yeah. yeah. I, well, I think the, the, the answer is that the, that the process that we've asked for is the local landmark designation, okay. right? Okay. Because that is something... That, and I, so we had Carl McWilliams here last right. session, and and um, and he's aware of, I mean, he's obviously very aware of the process yes. of, with yes, the state yes, yes. and national, right? Yeah. And so even he mentioned that it would probably not be possible to get the all the applications prepared for the state and national level right. in this time window that we have okay. for that this early meeting. Okay. So. I think our focus in the immediate time frame is to ask council, can we take, get, get this local landmark process moving? And then yeah. as that goes, it, I guess it would be yeah. presuming that the council says yes, then we could ask yeah. Mick Williams to move forward with a bigger picture. Okay. Or, or we could make a part of, the, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the presentation and ask to council, can we, you know, the various levels and have them uh, come back and say, yeah, we're, we're fine with all of them or what, whatever, but get some direction. I just wanted, that's perfect. I just wanted clarification because I saw it was local and state and national registers that were discussed last time. So I wanted to make sure I understood what your request was. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Barnett. Uh, yes. And that, I would have answered that the same way. That was our request. And we understood that from the presentation that, the state one takes much longer. Yeah. Um, it's uh, just to clarify, uh, Commissioner Lane, the uh, Chairman Lane, that the, uh, uh, the the council doesn't need to have very much to proceed. They have our recommendation, and they don't, they're not going to make a, a decision other than to ask the staff, like they did last two or three meeting, two of uh, last meeting. They asked the staff to gather the evidence or the information that they can then take on for a decision. The gathering that evidence, as I understand, is going to parks and working with them and then getting an okay as the landowner and then pulling together a actual proposal to later on, maybe February or March, put before the council and then ask the council to take a decision on that. So the early decision is just a decision instruct the staff to move forward 
and gather the information. Uh, ultimately, the HPC, per the code, makes a recommendation on the ordinance. So are, are you saying we could just go to council and be done with it? Is, is that, is that um, what you're describing? So we're talking about the recommendation for landmark. Yeah. Okay. That has to be an ordinance. Yes. Okay. So before the HBC has said, let's start the process. Right. Okay. The next step, as I understand it, in a perfect world, would be for the council to the, to, and, sta and the staff to say, yes, not independent of the HBC, based on what HBC has said, for the council and the staff to proceed further with whatever action needs to be taken so that council can then make a judgment, make take a decision on it. Right. They can't do that until the staff then, subsequent to the recommend to the request from the council, goes to parks, works with parks, develops an ordinance, whether that has to, I guess that what you're saying is that has to come back to HBC, and then HBC acts, and then the council takes a final decision. Thank you, guys. Have, have I laid that out? Yeah. All right. So the first step is the council acts, if it chooses to, to instruct the staff to proceed. Yep. And so that's how you understand it as well. Yeah. It just we just need to get there. I mean, rather than go through all this, we want council to to be on board, basically. Yeah, the ordinance does say, as the owner, the owner has to, or else you do the petition, right? <laughs> right. That's that's the option. If if the council says, no, we don't want to do it, then you go a petition route. All right. You guys should have this memorized. Right. After yeah. over <laughs> every sentence in the ordinance. Correct. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions or comments for staff? Um, we'll move to public invited to be heard. Uh, I don't have anybody on the list, and I believe the, our audience is a presenter for later. So I'm going to assume that we have no public comment, um, and we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and move on to item seven, which is our annual business. Um, I'm going to group a couple of these later on, but we'll start with... Uh, so every every January meeting, we re-elect our uh, positions and go through a number of um, um, <clears throat> sort of housekeeping components here um, for the year. So first is election of the chair. Uh, do I have a motion? Um, I move to nominate Chairman Lane for chair again. Second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to uh, nominate uh, Chairman Lane as the as the chair for 24 by Commissioner Norton, seconded by Commissioner Fenster. All those in favor? I, I thought about abstaining for a second. But, um, <laughs> no. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm happy to continue. Uh, election of vice chair. We do need uh, a new vice chair. Our vice chair in the past has been Commissioner uh, Gayu. Uh, and so uh, with that, if there's anyone uh, that would uh, like to uh, uh, volunteer, otherwise I have a motion in mind. Okay. I'm going to move that Commissioner Norton be nominated as our vice chair for 24. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion on the floor for Commissioner Norton, uh, uh, motion by Chairman Lane, seconded by Commissioner Fenster um, for vice chair. All those in favor? <laughs> Say aye. aye. Any opposed? None. Um, now we have a new vice chair. Um, okay. Uh, approval of meeting dates and times. So in the staff report, we do have a couple of conflicts with our uh, sort of typical schedule. Um, the first would be uh, essentially... Uh, uh, removing February 10th as a meeting date uh, because we, uh, I'm sorry, February 
4th as the, yeah, thank you. I wrote that down wrong in my notes. Uh, February, uh, is it the 1st? Yeah, it would be the 1st. Uh, so removing the February 1st, uh, basically not having a meeting in February. February 1st is the, is uh, the Saving Places Conference. We have um, a HBC retreat on the 10th. So um, essentially not having a meeting in February. Uh, the other conflicts are really, well, I can tell you that the June 6th meeting, if we have it on the 6th, I won't be here. So there will, the vice chair will actually need to, to lead a meeting. Uh, uh, June 6th. Um, July 11th. Uh, let's see. So our, our normal meeting would be on July 4th. Obviously, that doesn't work. So July 11th would be the sensible place for that to go. Um, and there was a note in the staff report about September 5th being the week of Labor Day weekend, but it is the Thursday after. So I don't know if that's a conflict for anyone else. So um, any, any, you know, um, if there's no further comment, so I would move that uh, that our schedule um, uh, essentially involve deleting the February meeting, moving the July meeting to the 11th, and really other than that, it would remain the same. Okay, so um, <clears throat> motion from Chairman Lane, seconded by Commissioner Barnard. Is there any discussion, any further comment on that? No? Okay. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Sign. Opposed? None. Okay. I'm going to group D and E together. It's the approval of meeting location and agenda posting locations. Our meeting location is here, and our agenda posting locations have not changed online. Are they posted physically anywhere? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I believe three places yeah. around okay. City Hall. Yes, please. Okay, I have a, a motion to approve our uh, meeting location and agenda posting locations as unchanged by Commissioner Barnard, seconded by Commissioner Norton. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. That motion carries. And then uh, finally, approval of the bylaws. Um, we've, we've been through these a couple times actually over the course of this year. Um, it, do any commissioners have any comment or question on the bylaws? Yeah, Commissioner we, Fenster. Uh, we had uh, at least one session where we rather thoroughly scrubbed them. Uh, that's my recollection. I didn't go back and look, but uh, so <clears throat> uh, at this at this time, I don't see anything that uh, needs change. Move to approve. Okay. Uh, the bylaws, uh, as written in the staff report, uh, have been moved uh, for approval by Commissioner Fenster. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Sibley. Yep. So let's have some discussion. Uh, uh, hold on. Get your mic. Friendly amendment that the date on the bottom should be <laughs> the uh, fourth day of January not the second day of February, and it should be 2024. Uh -huh. 24. Commissioner Fenster, are you, uh, do you accept that? I and do. And Commissioner Sibley, do you accept second that? Okay. I think it was just carried over from the previous yeah. year. Yeah. All right, good catch. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay. Uh, motion to approve the bylaws as written and uh, amended, noted for the uh, date changes. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Those are approved. Thank you. Okay. That's the, the end of that. 
housekeeping stuff. Um, there, is, there are no items on our agenda for a public hearing. Uh, and so now we move to new business, uh, which is an update on the Callahan House. Ms. Hastings. Welcome and thank you for coming down here. Well, again, thank you for having me. My name is Brittany Hastings. I'm the Callahan House Manager, um, and I'm here to kind of give you a little overview about the restoration and preservation work that was done at Callahan House this year. Um, so a little overview about um, what I'm here to chat about is the uh, History Colorado State Historic Fund, um, which I'm sure you're probably familiar with, given your <laughs> line of work as well. Um, a little bit of a summary about our process going through that grant and the projects that were completed um, using that <laughs> fund um, cost summary and then some details and some photos for you about the restoration and preservation that was done this year. Um, so the History Colorado State Historical Fund uh, is funded by casino gaming tax revenue annually collected by the state of Colorado. And those funds are distributed to historic preservation projects through competitive grant process, which we underwent. Uh, and funds can go to projects including preservation planning, restoration and construction work, which pertains to what was done at Callahan House this year, um, and also educational expenses and things like that. Uh, eligibility to receive a grant from the fund is um, designated historic landmark, which Callahan House, of course, falls under. Uh, or considered contributing in designated historic district or eligible for listing. Uh, but again, we are, as you know, designated historic landmark. And that can be on a local, state, or national level. And this is given to public entities such as county or, in our case, city government or nonprofit organizations. Uh, applicants or owners must commit a cash match based on the percentage of the project costs, um, which the city of Longmont did do on our behalf, and that was the 25% cash match um, as a government organization. And then 50% would be for a profit-based organization or a non-government entity. So the grant summary, uh, in August of 2021, Callahan House Advisory Board and staff, um, members of council and, and other city staff were also helpful in the process in applying for the grant, which was awarded to us in December of 2021. And we had then had two years to complete the projects, which were officially all completed in early December of 2023. So came in just under the radar in the two year project window there. Uh, the original grant amount funded by the State Historic Fund was $180,000 and then a 25% cash match coming from the city, um, from CIP funds, in the amount of $60,000 for a total of $240,000 towards the projects. So three central projects uh, were part of the scope of the work. Um, and I'll give you kind of a brief overview here, and then we'll go through some details and a few photographs for you um, here in a moment. But the preservation of the ornate leaded glass windows, so all exterior windows at Callahan House um, that have leaded or beveled or stained glass were restored, including a creation and an installation of uh, storm windows for each of those windows. So a protective layer in efforts, obviously, towards preservation for those. Initially, was going to be a type of glazing, but then they deemed that the storm windows would be the best way to protect the exquisite windows at Callahan House. A uh, third part, or I'm sorry, the second part of the project was the historic concrete driveways that were uh, installed at Callahan House in the 1904 to 1908 era, uh, where the Callahans, you know, made a lot of upgrades and expanded the property in the house. And those actually have original drainage schematics designed by T.M. Callahan. So those were in need of quite a bit of repair, and we were able to do that as part of the scope of this project. The third aspect, and probably the one that is most noticeable for, for the public aesthetically, is the exterior woodwork restoration and repainting. So they did a historic paint analysis to figure out what the colors were of Callahan House in the early 1900s during the 
around 1906 to 1904 to 1908 era and um, figured out what the colors were at that time and we were able to restore the house to to its heyday with those colors which is really cool to see on the outside um, and then also lead paint remediation which is not surprising for a project like this but um, certainly a key factor in getting that restored as well cost summary for the project um, as I mentioned the the fund and with the cash match from the city budgeted was two hundred and forty thousand dollars for the project Upon completion, it came in um, at just over 208000 So always good to see things come in under budget, of course. $32,000 under budget almost. Um, so the city was able to get about 8000 of that back and use 1000 of that for some gutter repair that was also needed, um, restoration project that was needed and was able to become part of the scope of this project. And you can kind of see here a, a little bit of a breakdown about what was spent where. Um, part of the window project was the very iconic uh, rounded glass in the library, which is also beveled and leaded glass. And that was a pretty specific part of the project. Um, $5,000 going towards that. 18 for the, it says here protective glazing, but that ended up being the storm windows. Um, 7,000 for the paint analysis, and then the large chunk, 126,000 for the woodwork and restoration on the exterior, um, and then 50 for the driveway. So here's a few detailed images for you about the window preservation. Um, pictured here on the right is the lead, um, library window that I had mentioned, which I said is a really iconic part of Callahan House with the rounded glass. This is what faced out to the south garden and the fountain and whatnot. Um, and on the left here is a previous shot of the library window. So it was covered in plexiglass, which had really yellowed over time and was not very appealing to look at. It was protective enough, but not great to look at. Um, so the plexiglass was removed and the storm windows were created for every window that has the leaded glass. Um, and those were installed. And so you can see here in this image, the darker green there is the storm window. And then um, the wood framing for the window was restored and, and painted to match the rest of the exterior as well. Additionally, on the library window, the panes here were bowing out um, and were in major need of restoration. Those were in pretty bad shape. Um, and luckily, that was a big a big chunk of the project was to get those back in, in good condition. Um, and so these images here are what the windows look like now with the storm windows. So crystal clear, beautiful to see in and out. And we get these kind of lovely prisms in the afternoon that come through as well. So very happy to see that um, and just to see those, those windows kind of restored to their original glory there. Um, and the driveway restoration. So on the left, you can see the state that many parts of the driveway were in. Previous to the restoration, there was a lot of failed concrete and damage, um, a lot of water running underneath the concrete in the rain or when irrigation was used. So that was in need of, of restoration. Uh, the slower image here, this entire slab was, was redone. And the, con um, sorry, the company that we used, Empire, who does historic restoration, was able to maintain the original uh, aesthetics of that, which was really great. And then this image on the right here, uh, you can see here, this is a re-poured section, and this is an original section here. So they did a really good job matching the original drainage schematics and the original aesthetics there. And then the final piece was the exterior woodwork and the repainting. Uh, so this is the original, you can see a lot of damage in the original woodwork, and uh, these were the, the previous colors, and uh, paint peeling and, and whatnot. So this is Callahan House now. Um, these are the original colors, like I mentioned, from the 1906 era, early 1900s era. And the woodwork has all been restored and, and lead paint removed, and it's really beautiful. So if you haven't had a chance to come by and see, I encourage you to do that. Uh, and in terms of the public coming to view, we so most of this project was, the work on this project was completed in August of this year. And Callahan was closed to public events for, for all of August to get that work completed. 
The only outlier was the library window that I mentioned. So you can see that here. Uh, we just got that reinstalled on December 4th. And we had um, a open house, holiday open house scheduled for December 7th. So a uh, big shout out to Scott Yoho and the marketing team for getting us uh, the I had drafted a news release several months ago in hopes that we would be sending it out before the Art Walk open house in early September. But of course, some things got delayed as will happen with these projects. So um, so yeah, we got the news release out very quickly, just a couple of days before the open house. And it was picked up by the Longmont Times call, the Longmont Leader and the Boulder Daily Camera. And we had over 400 people come for the holiday open house, which is, as I'm told, one of our biggest ever. So that was great. People were really excited to come check out the finished project. And then we also hosted an additional couple of open houses on December 13th and uh, December 20th this last year. So a little bit of a visitation summary for you of Callahan House since we've finished out 2023. We saw 3,604 visitors in 2023, which comes in just under the mark of 2022. But keeping in mind that we were closed for August, we probably would have had another four to 500 visitors that month. Uh, and 939 of those visitors came just in December, so about a quarter of our visitation in 2023 happened in December, which is when all the grant work was completed. So we like to see that everybody's seeing the house under those conditions. Um, yeah, and that's, that's what I've got for you. Thank you so much for hosting me, and I don't know if anybody has any questions, but we're also happy to have you all come tour Callahan House whenever you're able. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. really exciting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, commissioners, any questions or comments? Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner Barnett. Do, uh, Whoop, sorry. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I, 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 I misheard that. Okay. <laughs> yep. Go ahead and do that again. Me? Yep. Uh, uh, Commissioner Fenster. Do you have a, uh, <clears throat> a protocol for advertising? In other words, um, if we're talking about either of the two local papers, uh, are there occasions when you advertise your hours and features, et cetera? Yes. Um, we do a lot of advertising through the city, of course, because we are um, an event venue often. That's how the city utilizes the space. Um, we do regular advertising through the city and occasionally through the local papers. Um, in 2024, part of my intention is to open up the house for more community programming events. So I think we would advertise for those more specifically and potentially through local papers, but certainly through the resources that the city has as well. And would any of that be guided? Guided tours? Mm -hmm. We... I'm not sure what we've done historically about that in the past other than the Third Avenue walking tours that are done through the museum. So those, the beginning of those do come through Callahan House um, and we guide the first like 10 or 15 minutes of that. Uh, and right now I'm, I've been offering guided tours just on a, you know, on a basis if anybody reaches out and is interested, then <laughs> we'd be certainly happy to show them the house. And then that's in addition to our roughly quarterly open houses where um, all of our board members are present and guiding folks throughout the house as well. So we don't have a regular like daily tours program. Um, it's basically by appointment and then our open houses, but we're always happy to have people come through if they wish to. I'm, I'm just wondering whether it would be worthwhile on at least some occasions, maybe one or two a year, maybe three or four a year, to advertise uh, guided tours that would be uh, overseen by an architect or an historic preservation individual? I think that would be great. Um, like I mentioned, we have the quarterly open houses where we provide information about the history of the Callahans and the house as well. But I do find that people are often very interested in the architecture and those aspects, which are part of it's part of the information that we provide as staff and board, but I, I think it would be lovely if someone who had, you know, some interesting background information about the more specifics of the architecture and the history wanted to come in and join in on those. That, I think that'd be lovely. So, thank you. Thanks. Any, anybody else? No? Um, I, I was uh, a little bit curious. Um, do you know 
how many windows you had in that house that had to get restored? I can think through and count on my fingers. Um, <laughs> I don't know the number off the top of my head, um, but just about every window at Callahan House has leaded and or beveled glass or stained glass, including like the upstairs window of the auto house um, and and whatnot. So they all anything that had leaded, beveled, or stained glass got a storm window. Right. So yeah to go through and count 15 or or so something yeah. along those lines it, and that that cost also included restoration of the window if it was in disrepair or whatever. yes yeah. yeah of the glass uh panels themselves and then the framework and whatnot was part of the exterior woodwork restoration okay. but both elements were part of the scope of the project great yeah looks yeah looks great thank you any other Questions or comments? Yeah. Thank you very much for coming down here. It's Thank exciting you for to see me. something like this happen. And right yes, now, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very it. much. Okay. Uh, our last item of business here uh, tonight would be the retreat agenda. So. The retreat again is scheduled for the uh, 10th of February. Um, Glenn, did you have anything in particular or is this just an open discussion? Uh, the one thing uh, that we would like to do is bring in the consultant and talk about the survey plan. Um, so that's really the only thing we have as far as a potential agenda item. But we'd love to hear yeah, if you'd like other things. So if there's anything we need to prepare for. Um, part of that's going to be we do have our GIS guy uh, basically identifying all the surveys we have in the community. So you can kind of see what's been surveyed, what hasn't. Um, and then we'll hopefully have an opportunity for the consultant to have looked into it a little bit and have kind of their ideas, but certainly bounce them off you and get input on it as well. Okay. Great. Um, if anybody has uh, any commissioners have something they want like to, uh, Commissioner Sibley. No, I'm sorry. I oh, I thought you were looking. I thought. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, no. I thought I you were giving. Oh. <laughs> okay. You turned my light on. Oh, boy. All right. Well, I did want to say something. Okay. Perfect. Um, Commissioner yeah, Glenn, the. Uh, this will be my second retreat, and I thought the last one was terrific, even though some people don't like the library. I thought it was great. And thank you for bringing snacks. Um, the uh, big man like me, you know, needs snacks. The, uh, what I, I, I think you did something like this last time, but what I would find helpful after the time I've been on the commission now is if we had some kind of a uh, spreadsheet which laid out all the pro all the projects that we've talked about in the last couple of years, and at least get some idea from the staff where where they are on it, and whether they see this as progressing during the year, and uh, and then get feedback from have a discussion feedback from the commission members on it, so you can get our feedback on things we'd like to see move or things that we're okay if we don't do anything on or, or whatever. But I, I just think it would be helpful to have that. And I also think it would be helpful if every quarter or so we just kind of updated that spreadsheet. Uh, sure. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go back in the, um, in, in the back minutes. I'm not sure. that The only thing I was focused in is code amendments. Um, so I don't know what, if there's other things. But one thing I did think that is kind of critical that I think came up in our last um, retreat was a notification to folks. Anybody who is, uh, owns a landmark, just to remind them that um, here's the advantages, here's what you have to do, here's where HPC is involved. Um, so I thought about that uh, as we adopt new um, uh, requirements for demolition, that maybe we expand that to anything that meets that 50-year-old criteria within the, um, the original town site. 
that we also include some kind of notification to those folks as well. Um, so that's that's one thing I think we should be on our to-do list for the next year. If you do that, uh, hold on. Excuse me. All right, Commissioner Fenster. If, uh, if you do that, are you going to need to run it by council or someone else before you issue it? I don't think so. No, it's just basically saying, here's the code, and this is what it says, and this is what it means. Okay. So, no, that would be just our administrative thing. Might have to upgrade our postage budget, but uh, <laughs> I think we can. Unless you bought that forever out. stamps before the, <laughs> before the year they go up. Yeah, I don't thank know, you. I, That's I bought my idea. roll 100 on the 31st, just so safe. Save the three dollars. Um, uh, the other thing that we have talked about, and I, I, I've got a couple of notes here, and um, was, you know, a little bit of just encouragement, right, uh, to, to folks, letting people know that if they've got a historic, if they've got a landmark property, or if they're considering uh, applying for landmark status, that there is funding available right, through the state for work on their homes, right? So if you, if you, if we, they could process tax, that's one of the things we do is, is process, you know, those um, applications for um, tax credit, right? Yeah. And so I, I think if, if folks, I'm not sure everybody understands that if they do some work and it meets these requirements that they can actually apply to the state for, mm -hmm. Effectively, re some form of reimbursement, right? Right. Uh, which, uh, which sort of helps to offset the notion that historic preserve, you know, owning a historic home is, you know, inherently more expensive, mm -hmm. which I think is also a narrative out there. Right. And we also um, locally have incentives. We can waive portions of the building permit if one's required. Um, there's a number of fees we can reduce. So just even well. some, again, outreach to, to people to There's let them carrots. know, right? Yeah. yeah, that there are carrots out there. Uh, yeah. Com Commissioner Barnett, did you have? Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Fenster? Yeah. Have we ever given some thought to having some kind of a convocation of historic property owners, maybe with a program and presentation I'm not familiar of if we've ever considered that yeah that, that that is done in some communities I'm aware of uh, sometimes to get criticism uh, crit critiquing and sometimes to have actually formal presentations from uh, experts whether they're community experts or national experts. I think that's a reasonable thing to discuss during the retreat. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Commissioner Barnard. I mean, I mean, I'm going to get the words wrong, but I know that we've talked about this from time to time. And we did talk about it at our last retreat. Some kind of a brochure or some kind of a, where we had looked at some of the other communities and and I'm, I don't remember exactly what it was for, but it was some way of putting, you, you know what I'm talking about, Glenn? Okay. I think so. Yeah. I think that would probably be in line with a mailing. Um, it, not that it would only use it in a mailing, but it, it would certainly help kind of describe the program and what it means. Right. But there, we looked at some other communities. I think the Louisville one was the one that jumps out at me. Is, um, hmm. uh, if, if, we looked at plans, historic preservation plans, which include Louisville. I remember that. Yeah, I'll go back and I'll check my notes. I have notes from this, and I'll, I'll pass them on to you. Yeah. But I think there are other projects like that that we've kind of started, and they they just other things have gotten in the way. Mm. And the retreats, I think the retreats a good time to kind of go over all of them. Yeah. But I'll go over my notes and send them to you. Okay. Yeah, and I just pulled up the the sort of packet from that retreat and, and then the minutes again. 
so that I could remember what happened, um, <laughs> which are very detailed. Um, and, and we and we had a lot of discussion about that outreach. I think we ought to put that back on the agenda for okay. this retreat and just talk about these sort of things again. And I was excited to see that in the number of things that we had there, in the outreach discussion summary, one of them actually did get accomplished, which was the Tower of Compassion, you know, moving forward. Uh, so so it's, it's always nice when you look back and see at least something that got done from a list of we should do these, right? Um, but I think we can talk some more about, um, about that and, and just refer back to some of the discussion we've had before. Um, I'm, I'm very excited that you put the... Um, cultural resource surveys on there. I'd like to expand that into a continuing discussion of its place in a, eventually a preservation plan. Mm -hmm. right? I want to keep that's an end goal. Um, it, it might be worth just having, uh, I think if Commissioner Jacoby were here, I'm, I, I don't want to 100% speak for him, but I'm, I'm going to guess that he would uh, want us to have uh, a discussion of our progress on the conservation overlay and where we are with that in there somewhere. So I would at least be prepared for that. Oh boy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's about all I had from the last time. So. Okay. Any other commissioners or comments? No? No? Oh, okay. okay. Commissioner Norton. I feel like over the last couple of retreats, um, in some of our meetings, we've brought up the idea of design guidelines, but they've never, we've always needed the preservation plan, we've needed the um, code updated, and so they haven't risen to be a priority. I wonder if um, thinking about developing design guidelines is something we want to reintroduce at the retreat or perhaps that's part of the preservation plan or that might be something we talk about in terms of the scope of the consultant. I mean something that basically puts a little bit more actionable design elements to like the Secretary of Interior's recommendations. Yeah, so that, um, and I think you're probably, you probably work more often with design guidelines than I do directly, but something that gives the average citizen in these different historic districts or just in the city of Longmont um, guidelines about what is appropriate to fit in with their neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, the, the ordinance um, talks about when you adopt a new district, uh, a local district, then there's the design guidelines. But right. overall, no, the ordinance doesn't really speak to that, but it would be very helpful right? yeah. when we get somebody coming before you that wants to you know, remove their windows and replace them or something. Right, and I think some of those uh, preservation plans that we thought were um, the most successful, I think included at least some elements of design yeah. guidelines, if not more complete design guidelines. Right. I, 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 th I would tend to agree. I think that would be a really important part of a preservation plan, but probably hard to do floating on its own. Right? Yeah. Okay, any other items that anyone would like to throw out there for retreat agenda discussion? No? All right, so seems like that's still enough to have a good discussion about. All right. Um, Okay, well, then that moves us to uh, any further comments from uh, HPC commissioners. Anyone have any, anything you'd like to throw out there? No? Okay. Uh, any comments from our new council representative, Mayor Peck? No? There you go. Yep, I just want to thank you for uh, allowing me to sit in on these meetings. Um, and I'm really impressed with the passion that you have for the history of Longmont and what you put into it. And that's shown by you keep reapplying so <laughs> to be on this board so you have historic knowledge. Uh, I do want to ask about the retreat. What time is it usually? Is, is it an all-day retreat? One to four. One to four, we'll do okay. do an afternoon. Yeah, and I just realized it conflicts with council retreat, I believe. 
Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say about that other than, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's a question for staff if there's, I don't know, at this point if we can make any adjustments to date or time. I think we have time to do that. Yeah, I, I think um, we set the 10th, and um, I'm pretty sure I just saw council's retreat as the 9th and 10th. Our, our okay. We can figure Either it out. Way. Yeah. We're, okay. It, I think it, at this point, it probably is, is, as long as we have it, we, we'd want to be in February for sure, right? We don't want to yeah. push it out any further than that because we're trying to right. really set the tone for the rest of the year. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, I guess if anything were to change, I mean, we certainly could deal with a straw poll via email or something like that. If okay. We, right. All right. <laughs> Well, it may right. be the same place. I, I, yeah, the I don't museum. know where Jennifer was looking. Was it? Yeah, the museum is what we booked. Actually, I'm glad you know that, so, uh, that's where it was last year. Your retreat. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to revisit that. Yeah. Maria's got an update. Yes, seventeenth. Okay, we got one vote for the 17th. So that's a long weekend for the school district? Oh, that's President's yeah. Day, right? Oh, yeah, that might only affect me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got the Saturday off. Well, again, I guess maybe if you want to look into it and then throw out a email. Okay. All right. We can adjust if need be. All right. Okay. It would be nice to have everyone here. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Well, that uh, takes care of everything we have on our agenda for this evening. I'll entertain a motion <coughs> to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Commissioner Norton and seconded by Commissioner Fenster. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you very much for your time. Wow. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.